This video we're going to look at question one from the Statics Learning Outcome 3 notes. So at the end of these notes is a section of tutorials, and this is question one from that section. We've been given a structure here which only has a single node that requires analysis. And we know this because there's only two members. There's a member AB here and the member BC here. And there's also an external force being applied him at it would be. So we have this information. We only have one node to choose from. And we'll be doing all of our work around that. We still need to follow all the steps required for Bose notation. It means the spaces between forces need to be named. And so we don't use A, B, and C for this because these refer to nodes. So we'll use P, Q, and R. So P is the space, and this is everywhere from our wall room to be hit an external force of that space P. Space Q, that's enclosed between the two members in the wall. And space R is the space between member BC and the external force. So whenever we give a space, until we, we go from one force to, to we get to another, and then that's enclosed in the space there. <clears throat> So everything we do is going to be based around node B. We can talk about node B for our analysis because we have the important information. We know at least one of the forces involved because we're told the external force is 26 kilonewtons and we have no more than two unknown forces and that's internal force in member AB and the internal force in member BC. So it's exactly what we need. Well, the sketch of node B looks like this. We have the member AB, AB. we have the member BC. We know this is a 60 degree angle here, so we can mark that in. And we've also got a known external force of 26 kilonewtons there. And of course, our spaces are carried over into this diagram as well. This is space P here, space Q, and space R. And each of our vectors is going to take its name from the spaces on either side of it. And we'll start off by naming the vector which we know the value of, um, and that is the vector, um, the 20, 20th kilonewton point down the way. And we'll name this vector P R after the two spaces on either side of it, space P and space R. Following the convention we use, we'll name the next vector beginning with R, so the other one that touches um, space R, so this vector will be called RQ. And then lastly, the final vector, we need to begin with Q and end with P. So this will be vector QP up here. So we have the names of our three vectors, and we have the size of the first vector we're going to draw. So we have everything we need to do analysis of the node. Now, you'll see that it's a 26 kilonewton force here, and so that's quite large. I mean, you might have fit that a piece of A4 paper, but based on doing this in paper, we're going to pick a smaller scale than that. I'm going to take a scale of one centimetre to two kilonewtons, which means for every two kilonewtons in force, we'll draw a one centimetre line, meaning our 26 kilonewton force will be 13 centimetres long when we draw it as a line. So starting uh, somewhere uh, ends up on our page. Now, I've got a feeling I know the, the general direction is, but I'll do a little cross here for our starting point so we can measure any angles off there and draw any lines starting from this point. And this will also be the point at which our triangle of forces ends. We'll, we'll always come back to the starting point. I'll draw some dashes in here. Remember, these dashes are not part of our diagram. There is something to guide us. So let's draw in these forces. And I'm going to start off using red. Um, and the, all my videos, I'm going to use different colors to illustrate the different forces. But there's no need to do this in the paper. And I'm going to draw in the vector PR starting from the middle of my starting cross here, going 13 centimetres down the way. So I'm going to take my ruler, make it vertical. And starting from the middle of my cross that I've made to mark my beginning position, 
draw a line that is 13 centimetres long. I think that's the best I can do with that. So this is pointing down the way. We know the direction of this force because it's an external force and the direction is indicated on the diagram in the question. And I'll mark this with P and R because I've named this vector of PR. And we know this is a 13 kilonewton, sorry, 26 kilonewton force, not a 30, 13 centimeter wide, but 26 kilonewtons. And now we need to find where my uh, other two um, vectors and forces are going to meet this diagram. Well, I know that the force QP is going to be horizontal because the member AB that it represents the horizontal. And I know because QP um, has a P in it, it has to pass through this point here. So I'm looking at a line that either goes out this way, Q somewhere over here, or a line that goes out this way and Q somewhere over here. That's the only possibilities I have because it's horizontal. Because I don't know which it is, I'll extend the line initially in both directions. So I'll line my ruler up with the point P where we started drawing our first vector. And using a different colour just to highlight the uh, different vector I'm working with here, I'll draw this blue line representing vector QP. So point Q has to be somewhere along this line, exactly where we're going to find out when we draw our next vector. Now, <clears throat> we now have to draw in the vector RQ. And RQ, what we're told, is at the point 60 degrees down from the horizontal when it's um, being drawn in. And it must pass through point R. So I'm using green for this one, but this line I've got here must through, pa pass through point R. And it's got an angle that looks a bit like this. Well, going through point R, an angle that looks, looks a bit like this. So I can guess that point Q is going to be up here somewhere. That's where they're going to meet now, now that I know where this is coming in. But before I get to that, I want to draw this in accurately. So another thing I can do again is I can draw in another little cross here at the end of vector PR for the purposes of measuring in the angle for this third force. So I'll draw a line there. I don't need to draw a vertical line going up the red line, but I can draw a little bit extending um, below the bottom of it just so we've got a nice cross that we can measure things from. And then we can return to our sketch of our node to see how we need to measure this angle. So what we're told is that this angle here is 60 degrees uh, below a horizontal line. And that's where the um, line is running from. So let's go and look at that point there. That's the same as saying our line is going to come around 60 degrees from here and measure up that way. So that's what I would do on a piece of paper with a protractor, set a protractor along this edge here, and measure around 60, make a wee mark, and then I'll draw a line running through the point at the end there. And all of that you have to imagine as I do it with my ruler. So my ruler is going to be set so it's coming around 60, just so we can be clear here. It's zero when it's flat, so it comes round to be 60 degrees. This is a 60 degree angle downwards from horizontal. And I can line it up with the end of the red vector here like this. I can draw a line up. And you can see I've made it cross over with the blue vector. And this is why I always recommend we do this in pencil because the only bits that we need now or what form our triangle of forces. So I can tidy up everything over on the top left up here. I don't need all of this. I don't need anything after the group blue and the green lines meet. So I can remove that and I can remove that. I certainly don't need this bit of green line down here. So I'm just reducing everything back to the triangle that we were given.
Now let's mark in the direction of the forces. Now the red one are marked on the vector because it's always going down. Now, of course, we're going down from P to R. Where the blue and the green lines meet must be point Q, because that's line PQ. Um, so line RQ and QP, so that's those forces that have been matched there. And if we come down from P to R, the only direction to go from R is up to Q, so this is our direction up here. And then we go from Q back to P. So we'll get to how big these forces are in a minute. But first of all, we're going to determine the nature of these um, internal forces and members. Well, I can see that the force along our vector um, QP is acting to the left. So that means it's acting away from the node. And I can see that the force in, in RQ is acting upwards. And so looking back at our node, this line pointing up is acting towards the node. So what I can say in this little table here is that um, QP and RQ both have their natures determined. So QP is acting in the way, um, so it's resisting tension, which means that it's a tie. So we can say that's a tie here. And RQ is acting towards the node, meaning it's resisting compression. So that's a strut. Struts are under compression, ties are under tension. So I should really say um, member force and nature. They're the three things that we write down. And of course, QP, we could have also called that AB and we would have called RQ BC because that's naming it after the nodes rather than the um, spaces. So you'll see both used in terms of notation here. So um, I'm calling it PQ, the so QP and R, RQ named after the spaces I've had to label here. But if we want to name it after the line, the member joining two nodes, they're the equivalent nodes that they belong to. So that's everything determined about the nature of our forces within our members. Let's find out how large they are. With the rulers already set up for the green line here, I'll measure this. And one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, um, lots of two centimeters, so 15 centimeters in total, which means this must be a 30 kilonewton force. Let's just write this down. I've measured this green line to be 15 centimeters. But our scale is two um, is one centimeter to two kilonewtons. So this is the same thing as 30 kilonewtons because of our scale up here. So I can write that in the RQ is 30 kilonewtons. And let's have a look at the length of QP or PQ, depending on which we're looking at. It's QP here because that's the way it's pointing. And I'll line this up here. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half centimeters. So I can write that down. This line is 7.5 centimeters long. But again, every centimeter represents two kilonewtons. So this is the same as 15 kilonewtons based on our scale. And I can add that to our table over here. Try and neaten that table up slightly. So we have a force we called QP, and the reason it's called QP because these are the spaces P and Q here, which represents this member up here. And we found that that was a, a tie because the force points away from the node. We found out that this line over here is pointing left, and we put it as pointing left in our node. That means it's pointing away from the node. And the same logic is used. If this one's pointing up the way, it's pointing up over here, which means pointing towards the node. And by measuring that second one, the green line, we found that was 30 kilonewtons in this truck, as we said before. So that's how we just go about solving question one from the tutorial question at the end of learning outcome three.